Perfect. Hi, Darwin. Hi, Monique. How are you? Hi, how are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. I'm so excited to chat with the two of you today about they, them. Um, my first question, also Darwin, your suit, I'm not sure what you would describe it as, that color. Oh my God. It's incredible. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. He's always <laughs> looking so freaking fresh, even on set. <laughs> and you also look fresh, Monique. Oh no, but I, let, let's just be real here. Come on. I want to be rocking oh, this stop suit. It. Sorry. Come on. <laughs> um, but my first question is pretty basic and Monique, we'll start with you. What drew you to the script for they slash them? I mean, you know, it, as an Asian American actor, there's only a certain breadth of roles I've ever had the opportunity to audition for. So mm -hmm. to get the opportunity to play a queer character and to get the opportunity to be in a queer love story, I just never thought I'd have the opportunity to do that. Um, so that, I mean, that's what drew me to the script and, and to be in a film full of queer protagonists, like, We've never seen a horror film done like this before. So I, I just feel very grateful to be a part of the film like this. And then Darwin, same question for you. I was very lucky. I was working with John Logan, our writer and director um, in a play in New York. And um, I created a play in Brazil. And I call him saying, I, I want you to, to do an adaptation of, of this play that I created in Brazil. And he came to New York, we started a workshop um but then we have to stop because of the pandemic and I was like I lost the opportunity to work with John Logan um but then he called me three months later saying that oh I, I wrote a, a role for you and wanted you to play and that I was over the moon you know that he was willing to just wanting to celebrate uniqueness and diversity and all of those things that me as a Brazilian actor wants in this country, you know, going forward with my career here. So yeah, it was very unusual, but and I feel very, very proud and lucky. I'm waiting for my next <laughs> phone call from John Logan. John, if you're watching. It's coming, it's coming. Well, and you both have queer sex scenes in this movie we have two queer sex scenes which is incredible you don't see a lot of queer sex and like they're positive great sex scenes and so again like what was that like again I start with you Darwin this time what was that like to have these sex scenes in this film and have them have queer intimacy portrayed in such a way finally it feels like in yeah horror. I I mean uh, I wish people could read John's script the way that he describes the scenes that's so brilliantly uh -oh. Um, he wants to celebrate beauty and usually we do not see, you know, it, it, gay sex scenes are always usually portrayed with shame or, or fear. And Joan wants to celebrate, you know, queerness in the most beautiful way. So I, I was very moved by having a chance to be there celebrating that as an actor. Um, yeah. And yeah, they, um, one of our executive producers, uh, Scott Turner Schofield, was there as our intimacy coordinator. Super important. And um, oh, yeah, cool. the producers um, connected Anna and me before we even got to Georgia to film. So Anna and I had extensive conversations before we even met in person. And then once we got to Georgia, as soon as I met Anna, I just, I just knew right away I could trust her. Um, we choreographed the scene together. And by the time we got to filming the scene, Anna and I already become such good friends that, you know, all I had to do was be in the scene with her and just react off of what was happening. And, you know, we're both really proud of what we were able to create together. Cause like, as you said, um, we don't get to see these kind of sex scenes, authentic gay sex scenes. And um, just everyone involved, I feel did such a good job making it as beautiful as it hopefully as it presented it made my gay heart so happy oh, especially to see like that's what we want <laughs> yeah. that's what we want to see yeah. especially two queer women well and monique yeah. you're bisexual and i'm also bisexual so having a bisexual oh, character actually, or your character yeah uh, your, uh, sorry, Veronica, your, character, your character is bisexual yeah, yeah, yeah. i apologize I mean, uh, that's what i, I actually say. swapped um anna's bisexual in real life but her character's gay and i'm gay in real life and veronica's bisexual <laughs> But Veronica, like, the bisexual character means a lot to me as a bisexual yeah, person because yeah. your character goes through a lot of the same mental stuff that I've gone through trying to yeah. figure out my sexuality and like not understanding like is this a real thing and so For that sure. just in 
meant a lot to see in a horror movie of all places. Oh, that means a lot. I oh. mean, because, you know, there's a lot of biphobia that exists, right? And and yeah. I, and John, you know, John did bring me aside and asked if, you know, we should have a bisexual character in this film. Um, so oh, I'm really? Just really, yeah, I'm just really happy that to hear that from you, because I mean, I think that's one of the main goals of this film to have authentic representations so that, you know, we all feel seen. Oh, a hundred percent. Like I've never felt so seen in a horror movie and I've been a horror it's fan so for so nice. long. So are either of you horror fans before being in they slash them? I'm, I'm a huge horror fan. Yeah. I'm oh, really? A good horror. Yes, I am. And it's just so crazy for me. Just, you know, from Brazil, watching Friday the 13th with Kevin Bacon doing his first movie and now being here with him in a summer camp in a horror movie is just like, life is too good, you know? You don't have the, those chances twice. I'm a scaredy cat and I just really rarely watch horror, but yeah. sort of to like uh, uh, go off a tangent off what Darwin was saying, one of the first nights um, that we were together, the campers saw Friday the 13th all together. Yeah. And that was the first time I ever saw the movie. <laughs> Um, oh, so no, I, have, were... <laughs> I, have this, I have the same feeling as Darwin though, like to see Kevin in that film and to be on set with him making a horror film. It's, it's, I think I'm still trying to process it. It's all surreal. But yeah. So what was it like working with him? Like it was obviously an honor in this very weird, like slasher setting. And it's so cool. But what was it like to work with him like one-on-one -on -one and be on set with Kevin Bacon? <laughs> I mean, it was, I, I found myself just watching him a lot, just watching how he conducts himself on set, how he interacts with everyone, um, just how he's acting, to be honest. It was a masterclass. Mm -hmm. And he was just, you know, another castmate. Like there was a line that I was struggling with on my coverage one day. And he's the one who suggested, let's do a series. And a series is when they keep the camera rolling. And I just say the same line over and over again in different ways. And uh, he's not even on camera. And he suggested that that everyone do it for me. Like that's the kind of generous actor that he was. Um, and he wouldn't run away to his trailer in between setups. He he sat with us all here. So, you know, he was just another castmate. He was great. And he's a producer in this movie. Yeah. So it's such an important, yeah. you know, thing to having someone with his career wanting to tell the story and celebrate queerness the way that he's doing is just that's why he is where he is and he is who he is in this in this business and yeah a beautiful picture. we call him k-bay k-bay we need to get that name trending <laughs> k period space b-a-e that's his new name i'm interviewing him later today so i will in fact mention call him that it. and i'll say that monique and darwin will, or yeah. Mon darwin and i will put you in there if you don't want to know. <laughs> i'll say yeah, we all call him yeah, yeah, we all call him. Yeah. <laughs> that's amazing darwin what was your first horror movie that you ever watched was thinking about that uh psycho i think oh yeah really I was, yeah i think one of my first movies and i yeah how old <laughs> were you watched. when you first watched psycho <laughs> yeah i love psycho and it's one of my favorite but i also I, I also love when a stranger calls the 79 version it's just like oh yes I, it's that just movie. so good so good acting it's that so first scene is just blows my mind every time that i watch yeah Monique, do you have any interest now in watching more horror movies after being in a horror movie? I mean, I do want to, <laughs> I do really want to watch Nope. Oh, yes. Like that. Oh, looks, it's good. It's yeah, really it, good. You saw it? Yeah, I really want to watch that. I mean, so, The Ring just traumatized me. <laughs> like it just, I just can't watch horror after that movie. But um, maybe, maybe I'll, maybe I'll ease my way into it. We'll see. We'll see. Is the funniest yeah. thing to see Monique watching a horror movie. <laughs> It's like the best experience ever. My eyes like we were watched Friday the, Yeah, we watched Friday the 13th together and it's just like, I couldn't focus on the movie. I was just focusing on the Monique reactions of it. It's just the best experience. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. And so we've talked, we've kind of like talked about this a little bit, but Monique, starting with you as, as a gay person, what does it mean for you not to only be in this movie, but to have a movie like this coming out to, to a wide audience? I did not see myself represented on screen until 2018. 
in Alice Wu's Netflix film, the half of it, I've spent most of my life never seeing myself represented on screen. Um, and this is a film I wish existed when I was growing up. So I'm just so excited for the queer youth to get to see themselves in this light, to get to see themselves as the protagonists of the story. Um, you know, there's so many more shows coming out where queer people are the protagonists of the story. So I'm more hopeful for the queer youth. Um, and hopefully it leaves them empowered watching this film. Um, but also, you know, for the people who aren't in the community watching this, I, I hope it creates a new sense of empathy. You know, if, if and if they weren't already that they become allies uh, to our cause. Yeah, and then same question for you, darling. Uh, I think growing up in Brazil, I always had the go to to know, see myself on screen as well. And I haven't. So that was my challenge uh, when I decided to move to America to, to be able to celebrate uniqueness and diversity. And I'm so happy that Blumhouse, Peacock, John, Kevin, they're like putting us there as the center of a story and, and with, with celebration, you know, it's, Uniqueness is our strength. And that's the message that I hope people at home receive watching this movie. Yeah. And the, there's a lot of joy in this movie, but there's also a lot of pretty intense you know, subject matter. Was it difficult on set to kind of get into these pretty emotionally intense moments? You rehearse because- I, I was over the moon. I was just so happy to be there. And also like we were working with uh, the majority of our, our cast and, and crew were queer so there was this environment a family environment there that we were just like having so much fun um telling the story that i i used to play though i was there was a a ghosty kind of cabin or something yeah, i was like I was, cabin. I was embracing the ghost and in, ghosts instead of running for them because i was so happy uh to be part of this movie I mean, for me, I mean, I already told you I can't watch more movies. Um, so, but when, I read, <laughs> but when I read the script, um, to be honest, I didn't read it as a horror film. I saw it as a love story. Well, specifically for my character. Uh, mm. okay. um, so, so I, I mean, Anna and I were in a rom com, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I don't know what horror movie you're talking about. <laughs> Does someone making die? Pies together know. in cooking class. Being cute, <laughs> holding hands, making pie. Someone is, you know, someone's going to end up cutting the movie and making it into a rom com. That's going to hit YouTube. Someone's going to do it. I absolutely cannot wait for that. The, the, the rom com cut of They yeah. Slash Them. <laughs> and then, um, Monique, starting with you, what was the most challenging scene for you personally to mm -hmm. film or be a part of in They Slash Them? I would say it was definitely the, um, we had a group therapy scene in the beginning of the film. Um, mm -hmm. I would say that um, we shot, I mean, as you saw in the movie that there's a lot of cuts where it goes to single shots. Um, all of yeah. us shot multiple lines that all of those lines didn't make the movie. Um, so to be coming, cause that's coming from a real place, right? Those lines. Yeah. So I would say that those that those scenes were definitely the most challenging for me. Mm. Okay. And then Darwin, what about you? I don't want to give spoilers, but <laughs> okay. Uh, Fair enough. <laughs> I know, but I'm gonna tell you that um I'm in my underwear uh oh in the code like in two scenes of this movie. Uh, and that was very challenging. We're, you know, it was supposed to be sunset, but you know, it was a sunrise for us. So 5 a.m. shooting in the lake in Georgia was was a challenge moment. And then I had a night scene um later on, like I think 2 a.m. or something like that, that it was like pretend to be cool, pretend that you're not cold here. Those were challenges, exciting challenges, but uh, yeah, the, yeah, being almost naked in, in the lake there. I mean, the, the shots in the trailer, so I think we could talk about it, but he's floating on a donut in the lake and it, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. it felt so bad. Darwin was texting us because it, it was one of the last days of shooting and he was by himself. It was in the middle of the morning. He's there just with a Speedo on and it's freezing <laughs> outside. 
but we have some horror there and I love a horror. So he really had to act that said. day. Oh my God. <laughs> we felt so bad. He was literally like, Oh, shivering. Oh my God. Doing his own stunts yeah. here. <laughs> yeah, <isn't> it? <laughs> and then sorry, what was it like acting with Cooper? Uh, just was the first person that I, I met actually, we met in New York um, uh-huh. before the movie start, started. And um, it's just, that is that the person who embraces you and you say you, you feel like I can do this with you and we we're telling such an important message and we're so proud of it um, that had the intimacy of it is just it, it's it's magical it doesn't happen all the time but when it happens you just yeah. feel so grateful for it. Well, and the chemistry between all of you is so good. Like, what was that like first meeting everybody in the big group and becoming what looks like a fam, a found family, which is obviously such a queer experience in and of itself. I think the fact that we were all queer, we just connected right away. There was just this understanding where we didn't have to worry about being judged for our queerness. And we knew that whoever we were talking to was going to see us for who we were. Um, so there was just an instant ease, instant connection, and thank God we all bonded. That would have been. (laughs) And there's, I think there's some good elements too. We're, we're shooting in these two, uh, camps. There was no cell phone reception. Mm. So when we met the first time, like we're not hiding ourselves, Mm -hmm. uh, like behind our phones. So we kind of have to have conversations immediately and we bond so well together. Yeah. I think that's what's beautiful too, you know, be without our phones just having conversations and knowing each other i was actually really grateful for that at the beginning i was like no cell phone service are you kidding me but i just so happy because it it really forced us to be present with each other was it like it sounded like summer like an actual summer camp like even though you were it's an actual summer on a summer camp like it sounded like it was almost like some whistler no i think it's called i mean don't quote me on this but it, (laughs) it it exists in rutledge georgia and i think it was called rutledge camp they they rented the whole camp. They actually shot the Fear Street movies there as well. Oh, cool! And then yeah. you guys got to be at summer camp, like with yeah. each other. I just like off off camera. It's, it felt like summer camp, right? It really yes. did. I mean, we shot during COVID, and it forced us to be in a bubble with each other. So we would yeah. do all these activities together. Uh, we'd we'd have movie, like I said, the Friday the Thirteenth screening. Went zip lining. We go to this uh, one restaurant in Covington called City Pharmacy. That's like the one restaurant <laughs> we only went to. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, we we had each other. Um, it really did feel like summer camp. It was a lot of fun. Amazing. And my final question, starting with Darwin, if you could recommend one queer movie for people to watch, what queer movie should they see? They slash them. That's perfect. Gonna, That's a you know what? Ten out of ten answer. That's <laughs> you go peacock August fifth and see if they slash them. You yeah. I'm not gonna top that answer. <laughs> they slash them. Oh, no, I'm doing yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, doing yeah. Right. Slash yeah. Them. Well, thank you both right. so much for chatting with me. Again, this movie thank makes you. my queer heart so happy. So I really appreciate everything that you guys do in this film. So thank you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you.